Quarantine certainly did a number on a lot of people, myself included, because it apparently decided to suddenly reignite my passion for buying Transformers toys, which let me tell you has been an absolute wonder on my wallet. I definitely picked a good time for it too, because Transformers has been absolutely crushing it with the new War for Cybertron trilogy, which has got to be some of Hasbro's best work. And as much as that makes this video sound like a paid endorsement, you gotta trust me here, if this video was an ad that I would not be allowed to complain as much as I'm about to. This whole thing started for me when I decided to rewatch the Bumblebee movie one day, and I I thought it would be a great idea to buy the Blitzwing and Bumblebee Studio Series figures so I could recreate their fight scene from the movie. Uh, and then it all kind of just spiraled out of control from there. And it certainly didn't help that I also watched the War for Cybertron shows, which while not very good, I definitely remember all I could think about while watching was, man, it'd be cool to have toys of these guys. I don't know what kind of subliminal messaging shit Hasbro is pulling here, but it is working. What the fuck? When did I buy this? I used to collect TF toys a lot when I was younger, mostly through birthday presents because of the pretty ridiculous prizes at the time. God, if only I knew. And I suppose I picked a good time to nod out of it since it was during Combiner Wars where everything was just the same thing again. <sighs> it was a good five or so years of having money. So just to give you a rundown on the current trilogy, which all share the same aesthetics and engineering, it all started in 2018 with the Siege line, which focused on the Cybertronian modes of select Autobots and Decepticons, which was then succeeded two years later by Earthrise, which as you can imagine, focused instead on their Earth modes, which look a bit more familiar to what we're used to. And then finally concluded this year with Kingdom, which focused on their Earth modes again, and <laughs> Monkey. Getting back into it has meant I've had to relearn all the jargon and whatever the fuck benib means. I've also learned that every Transformers line has their own size class, which Hasbro seems to make up all over again with each new series. Right now though, we've got Micro and Battle Masters, which solely exist just to decorate store shelves, Core Class, which if it's not obvious, I don't own, Deluxe Class, Voyager Class, Leader Class, and Commander Class. And Titan Class. Fuck! It's why I'm eternally grateful that the Masterpiece line does absolutely nothing for me because Jesus fucking Christ. It all seems like a pretty straightforward size pattern if you ask me, but apparently Hasbro doesn't agree because then you've got... Fuck. Because then you've got examples like Deluxe Class Earthrise Cliffjumper, who is literally half the size of his wave mates, but he sure as hell costs the same. <laughs> Another example, hold on a minute, is Studio Series 86 Voyager Class Hot Rod, who is the same size as all of the other Deluxes, but oh, because they chucked a couple of accessories in there, he's now $45. What the fuck? This is all because of their new focus on cartoon accurate scaling, which I must admit for the most part, I have very much appreciated, mostly. But it essentially means these size classes don't actually mean anything besides the price point. Wonderful. And to anyone who wants Studio Series Devastator, I'm sorry. Boobies. One of the earliest things you have to accept when it comes to Transformers toys is that basically half of them are just the same thing again. Oh my god, it's so fucking cool. Whoever came up with the idea of repainted toys being separate characters is either a complete genius or just incorrigibly evil. Okay, so he's a clone of Soundwave created by Shockwave, who is now- Oh my god, yeah? Pirate Captain fighting for Night Oh, that's so cool. It's not exactly like this is a new thing. The literal second Transformers hit the store shelves, the bigwigs up at Hasbro realized they could just release the same thing again but red, and we'd all buy it without a second thought. But if you really want to reach that level of just a complete failure of a human being, then don't worry, they also release repaints of the exact same characters. This new trilogy has done something I've really appreciated though, by separating the repaints away from the main line with the Netflix series, which is what they've done to avoid polluting the main waves with slight variations of existing figures. The people who hated the battle damage in Siege must have loved this shit. So if you weren't satisfied with your regular Siege prowl, you can now get him covered in literal shit. Now I'm not too knowledgeable about how they've done it in previous lines, but I definitely can tell you about some of the bullshit they've put with this new trilogy. The Transformers collecting experience is basically going, hey, that Siege Sideswipe is pretty cool, but don't you also want Sideswipe but needing a shower? Or Sideswipe in black and red? Or Sideswipe but a police car? Or Sideswipe but a police car but a different character? Or Sideswipe but a police car but a different character with shit on him? Or Sideswipe but yellow? Or Sideswipe but blue? Or Sideswipe but in a two pack so you have to buy two figures just to get the one you actually fucking want? I'm so tired, man. I just want to enjoy the figure. I own, could you please stop making better versions of it? My collection is reduced to a revolving door at this point where no one is ever safe. I literally got tracks here like only a couple months ago. And oh, never mind, out he goes. And yes, I know you can have two of the same character, but not all of us are toy reviewers, okay? You, you stay the fuck away from me. So in Transformers toy collecting, you've got redecos, retools, and repaints. All of which are just fancy ways of saying that Hasbro's ripping you off. A redeco is a toy that shares the same mold as another figure, but has an entirely new paint job applied to it, which you'll see on copy paste characters like the Seekers and Rumble and Frenzy. Yes, that's the correct way, fuck you. A repaint on the other hand is a figure that uses the exact same paint, but just in 
different places. Whereas a retool is when a toy is just an altered Combiner Wars silver bowl. And yes, they're different enough for me to want them, mom! An unfortunate amount of my time is spent carefully looking at promo shots of updated figures to work out whether I'm comfortable with having the objectively inferior version. Yeah, man, it's totally just as good. Because now you've got all these different versions of the exact same figure and character, but with just the slightest of changes made to them, which to me is just so unnecessarily confusing and annoying. It's a never-ending cycle because as soon as I finally track down all the guys from one wave that I want, they just announce another one with the exact same characters that's gonna make me do the whole thing all over again. And it's slowly dawning on me that I'm never going to be able to catch up. Please help me, it never ends. Look, I don't wanna say I'm addicted at this point, but I definitely can't stop myself. Here's an example of the ridiculously stupid shit I have to do just to get a single figure that I want. This is Siege Mirage. It is cool. Well, just a couple weeks ago, as of this video, Hasbro announced that they're doing a Kingdom 2 pack that contains a new Earth Mode Mirage that looks significantly better than the one I just got at the very reasonable price of $70 on Amazon. Which means that if I want him, I'm going to have to buy the entire two pack, then sell my Siege Mirage and the Grimlock to cover my costs just to get the one figure. If your hobby doesn't make you question your own existence, then are you even doing it right? <sighs> and while I'm on the topic of complaining about meaningless crap that no one cares about, the Transformers. <laughs> Oh Hasbro loves exclusives almost as much as they love money. These things have never been as bad as they were during the 2020 portion of the War for Cybertron trilogy, Earthrise. Hasbro likes to go a bit nuts when it comes to making deals with stores to only allow them to sell a particular figure. <laughs> Though in doing this, they kind of tend to forget that the rest of the world outside of America doesn't have Walmart. So you'd think that they'd release these figures normally everywhere else, right? No? Nope. What the fuck is a Walgreens? I don't know what on earth is going on in the US where not only is a pharmacy selling toys for some reason, but also apparently does so often enough to warrant them having exclusive ones, but all right. You would assume that exclusives would be reserved for more obscure characters that most people wouldn't get upset about. But no, let's make fucking Ratchet a store exclusive. Twice. One day we'll be together, my love. And it's been getting especially frustrating when entire teams are impossible to collect because certain members have been made exclusives. Like the Battle Chargers, for example. Runamark here was available normally in Wave 3 of Earthrise, whereas Runabout is exclusive to the US and just straight up isn't being sold outside of it. Unless, of course, I'm willing to take out a loan from the bank. Even though they're just direct repaints of each other. An even more frustrating example is the Seekers, a group of six Decepticon jets, of which half have been major characters in the Transformers series, where only Starscream has been normally available available at retail with the other five all being exclusives, which I'm pretty sure is a war crime. I cannot even begin to describe to you the absolute agony that is trying to find a Siege Skywarp. Because they also did this back in Siege, where instead of letting you just buy the fucking Seeker Trio normally, Hasbro instead banished Skywarp to a multi-pack that was only available on Amazon, and is now, as you can imagine, a little bit more than hard to find. When everyone has to pretend that another guy is the guy they actually want, then you've done something wrong. Not to mention, Hasbro's monitoring of quality control was absolutely through the roof with Earth Riots. I don't think even a single person had a problem with their figures. But you know, there was that whole COVID thing. Alright, you get a pass this time, guys. At the very least, it's hopefully all over now that... I love how much Hasbro hates us. It's almost kind of painfully hilarious that right in the middle of what seems to be Hasbro's A game, the whole world had to be hit with the discovery that people don't wash their hands, which has caused a lot of the problems people have had with the latest lines. Something to do with plastic shortages. Some people have theorized that Earthrise was cut short because of the pandemic, seeing as it only had three waves as opposed to the usual four, which has resulted in some oddities in the current lines. Like, for example, Hasbro's ever-present quest to only make Generation 1 figures until the end of time. You can't keep getting away with it! I love G1 though, so I'm not complaining. Kingdom set out to give us a break from the abundance of G1 by giving us a line of updated beloved Beast Wars characters, as well as an equally dominant amount of G1. God damn it. Look, all I'm saying is I didn't expect to see a truck and a tank guy in a line called Kingdom. Which does have to make you wonder if Huffer, Warpath, and Inferno were supposed to be a part of Earthrise, since they fit right in with those guys. Then you've got the brand new Studio Series 86 line, which I'm absolutely adoring, bringing us fantastic non-gimmicky figures of the main cast of Transformers the movie. All except for Cyclonus, who is a part of Kingdom, despite perfectly fitting in with the rest of 86. What? One of the biggest wins to come out of this trilogy is Hasbro's newfound dedication to brand unification. Meaning their counterpart over in Japan is no longer allowed to make better versions of the same figures that are impossible to get anymore. For whatever reasons, the guys responsible for making Transformers toys over in Japan, Takara Tomy, quite commonly make their own versions of new figures that are exclusive only to Japan. Which is as dumb and unnecessary as it sounds, yeah. I must admit it was getting unbelievably tiring buying a new figure and being very happy with it, only to look it up and then gaze upon this significantly better version of 
rubber that you will never be able to own unless you have a house to mortgage. But don't worry, they released brand new ones just this year that are exclusive to Target in the US. Oh yeah, that classic Jetfire? You like that? Yeah, well Takara made a more cartoon accurate version of it and it cost you $200. Suffer. This isn't a joke, by the way. Nearly every mainline Transformers series has had Takara outdoing Hasbro in every aspect, making it feel really insulting when it's like, no, you can't have this one, but you can have this worse version, you dumb American. Occasionally, there are only minor changes that I suppose you could overlook, but other times it's, oh, come on, what the fuck? The entirety of the Unite Warriors line was basically dedicated to doing Combiner Wars, but better in every single way, from having cartoon-accurate paint jobs and faithful Combiner teams to straight up adding articulation and posability, all while in the process, making Hasbro look like a shitty knockoff company. But it's okay, guys. You can tell Hasbro really cares about the quality of their products. I've never understood why this is the case, especially when quite often the changes are so minimal. I'm sure there's an understandable reason that someone in the comments can tell me about, but until then, I guess I'll just be grateful that they don't really do it anymore. Sometimes. Takara, I swear to God, I will fly over there. And that's why sometimes the only way to get these things is on the- I am directly below! Never in my life did I think Facebook would ever be good for anything outside of spreading misinformation. But as of late, I've realized that out of all the options to buy pre-owned toys, none have brought me as much suffering as Marketplace, which truly is a fascinating website. What, what the fuck? What the fuck? At least several hours of my day is spent browsing this barren wasteland filled with absurdly marked up prices or broken incomprehensible remains of what I think once used to be a toy. All of which are always just chucked on the floor. Why are they always on the fucking floor? Aside from that though, it is where a brunt of the newfound dents in my bank account have come from. Buying pre-owned can be like Russian roulette, but instead of getting the sweet release of death, you instead just might get the power of the Prime's Dinobots covered in hair. Yes, that actually happened and I'm still not over it. God, I hope it was head hair. Hey, it's like an 80% success rate. Oh, take that. Through these Facebook groups, I've also come to realize that the average age for a Transformers collector is a lot more... old person. <laughs> I'm not at all suggesting there's anything wrong with being into this sort of thing at an older age, in spite of what Twitter might think, you are in fact allowed to have a little bit of joy in your life, but rather instead that I found some people who are into it perhaps a bit too much. Like this American toy group my friend showed me. I won't let my wife buy me Transformers toys, she'll just get it wrong. When you play with Transformers and your girlfriend can't see your enjoyment cause she's watching TikTok, mine does the same. My wife would say nothing and make me a sandwich because, uh, oh. Ugh. But of course, you can't talk about an aftermarket for Transformers toys without bringing up eBay. eBay. What? the fuck is going on with this site? I bought a couple things off of eBay that have actually been pretty good deals, but for the most part, people on this site just go absolutely insane with their pricing, and it really makes me wonder if people could actually afford this stuff to warrant them to keep doing it. <laughs> anyway, fuck eBay, that's where I was going with this. In Australia, at least, though, that's pretty much the best options we have to turn to. Unless you want to resort to Gumtree. <laughs> you know, not like any proper online retailers are willing to give us a hand. Hasbro Pulse, where fans come first. Unless you don't live in the US or UK, in which case, go fuck yourself. It gets even more fun for non-official products. Wow, this third party figure looks cool. Okay, never mind. I suppose it could be worse. I could be a Star Wars collector. As someone who is probably the only person on Earth not to transform their Transformers entirely because I am too scared to break them, it's always really comforting to know that for every figure I can't work out how to transform, there's a review out there explaining to me how to do it. The toy review scene on YouTube is really what's been helping keep this whole thing fun for me. Seeing other people sharing my excitement for new releases and grievances with the prices, and sometimes even convincing me to add even more things onto my wish list because God knows it isn't large enough already, you bastards. For real though, I can stop whenever I want. I mean, Sound Blaster? That's just a black and red sound wave. Why the hell would I want that? This video is a cry for help. Please, someone help me. Can't stop buying them. Please, please save my bank account. And just like that, they're a tax write-off.